Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And have you ever wondered what would happen if they increased the RNG in World of Tanks? We're well, going to find exactly that today as Wargaming turn it up to an extreme with the second version of their arcade cabinet game mode, which is called the Element of Surprise. Yeah, we've all had those surprising moments in World of Tanks when your shells either do plus 25 or minus 25% damage. Well, not today. And that is because Wargaming are increasing the damage spread up to plus or minus 75%. So, with a Jagdpanzer 100 you could either do uh, 1,800 damage, or you could do, like, about 300. In addition to this, one thing that was confusing for me is I thought that Wargaming had only increased auto-reloader reload time by 25%. But I was very wrong. They've changed the reloads of all of the vehicles, so auto-reloaders, auto loaders and even single shot tanks as well so you can play whatever you want and you've just got more chances to fire and finally wargaming have increased engine power by 50 percent which really helps those vehicles like the previous one in railgun that have underpowered engines but great top speeds so without further ado why don't we pick the um most rng based tank in the game that also deals the highest average damage at either 1,150 on its AP rounds or 1,750 on its premium Hesh rounds. And yeah, try and go and see if we can give a few of our opponents uh, a bit of a surprise. Now, in theory, what could this roll for then with, uh, with one of my premium shells? My premium shells, in theory, could go 1,750 times by 1.75. I could roll for 3,000 damage with an FE. By the way, if anyone plays this event, which is available for the next three days, and you get a 3,000 damage FE shell, print screen it, because I don't imagine it's going to happen very often. You'd have to hit a mouse right at the beginning of the battle and roll like one in a million. Although, to be fair, Wargaming have actually increased the instances of um, extreme RNG happening. So, I effectively, what I think that they've done when I say that is they've changed the game now so previously it would have been under like a normal distribution so the plus 25 minus 25 percent damage rolls would have been very infrequent so if they've made it more extreme maybe they've changed the curve to being uh, not a bell shape but maybe like an upside down bell shape that doesn't really make much sense what I'm trying to suggest is it's going to be more like that rather than a normal distribution so you've got more chances of rolling higher or lower I expect that everyone's going to be pretty uh, pretty excited to be able to get into these games here. Here comes the Object 268 version 4. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Is he going to turn? Is he going to turn? He is. Did I roll for 363? Oh, it's because I had a Hesh round loaded and not an AP round. I thought I had an armor-piercing round loaded in my brain. That was a bit of a misplay by me. Is this Fosh 155 really just going to come straight round the corner? Oh, man. Oh man, here we go, here we go, my first bit of RNG. Did I just penetrate a Fosh 155 for 739? Oh. Wow. Well, it looks like I'm unlucky then, boys and girls, but I'm reloaded and I'm ready to go again. Shall I go after this FV? God, this is an extreme game mode. Everyone's just driving around like absolute maniacs. All right, let's change to an armor-piercing shell here and see if I can turn for these uh, Object 268 version 4s. Enemy armor. I rolled for 691! What is my life? That's an armor-piercing shell that usually does 1,150. It didn't do 1,150. Oh. Well, I think I just found out that it's not my lucky day. My penetrating Hesh shell, which usually does 1,750, did 739. And my armor piercing round, that usually does 1,150, did 691. This is not World of Tanks. Okay, okay, okay. Well, maybe the FV215B183 isn't going to be our boy today. But what about maybe the Panzer E100? Classic, big old German tank destroyer that could also be able to do some ramming damage inside this game mode because of course all of the engine powers have been increased by 50 percent well a nice map rotation wargaming it's really interesting to see the kinds of tanks that people pick it seems to be still varied across the board and i guess that makes more sense in this game mode because the effects are kind of helping everyone or not helping everyone that 25 percent reload that originally i thought because it said auto reloader Reload time reduced by 
I didn't realize that the title wasn't part of the actual description. I wonder if anyone else made that mistake. You'll have to let me know. All right, then. So Jagdpanzer E100 on Runeberg. Um, yeah, well, we're going to find out whether I've been naughty or nice this game, that's for sure. The enemy team really just absolutely steamrolled us in that last game, didn't they? Nothing really too much that we could do about it. Yeah, you're welcome, dude. Consider it, baby, at the start of the game, helping the 780 be able to go and get behind the church. You know, he needs to just go and he needs to go do some prayers, right? Pray to RN Jesus to be able to uh, hopefully get some big damage rolls in this game. I have to admit, seeing the reload on this tank being 16.37 is pretty cool. I can imagine what height... Ooh, is this guy just going to go? Well, we'll never know whether I was a high roller or at least we know I wasn't a low roller, right? Does feel a little bit sad to think, like, maybe that could have been the, the, the 1,800 damage roll, but he didn't have enough hit points to be able to donate to me. Um, all right, well, oh, thank you, Yakpan E100. Sorry about that. Yeah, you can... Did... Did he get hit by a 121B or just an E100 for 1,700 there? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, anyway, he got hit hard. Oh, what's that Jaegeru doing? Well, I entered the Jagdpanzer E100 there for 1,214. Definitely not very many extreme rolls so far. The only thing that really alarms me about playing tanks with this high alpha damage is that the benefit is lost. Because the extreme high rolls aren't really going to happen so much unless the target has a lot of hit points. So you're actually kind of losing out unless you're shooting at a tank that has about 1,800 hit points with the E100 Jagdpanzer. Because otherwise you're just most likely to be able to, uh, to get caught out. See? Low roll there. He got hit. He should have got hit for 1,800 and he only got hit for like 1,200 like from me and the E4 combined. So it looks like that's that 60 TP's lucky day, or at least it was until it wasn't. What's this Cranvong doing? Come on, here we go. Big boy roll for YouTube. What? What is up? I'm just doing like very small amounts higher. I thought Wargaming increased the RNG. Well, apparently they did for that 60 TP as he rolled for 1,226 on me. What is this game? And the Cranvang rolls for 700 with a penetrating shell. Oh, luckily the 60 TP didn't manage to go through me there. What about this grill friend? Grill friend wants to take a shot. Oh, of course it's firing heat into my cheeks. So I just got unlucky pretty much. I mean, sure, I guess I rolled for 1,200 on the Jaegeru and 1,200 on the Cranvang. It's not my lucky day. But one thing that I'm realizing is that it's probably not that advantageous to actually have the crazy alpha damage outside of the fact that the reload is reduced, but the tank speeds aren't increased by that much outside of the 25% rate of uh, 25, sorry, the 50% engine power. So the advantage of alpha damage in this game mode is that I guess you could get lucky, but it's more about saving up that damage to be able to unleash it. And considering all of the rate of fires are increased, that's that's pretty cool. I tell you what isn't cool though. Getting hit for 1,226 out of two out of 750 from a 60 TP AP shell, and then getting hit by a Cranvang for 700. Oof, sir. Okay, okay, so our high alpha damage tanks are not very lucky for us. What about if we were to play something like a Cranvang in this game mode? Remember that the Cranvang has exceedingly terrible um, engine power, which means that it's really not going to, it's going to benefit a lot, I should say, from the being able to get around quicker. And the DPM as well will become outrageous with a vehicle like this. The only problem with playing an auto loader rather than an auto reloader is that you need to take into account that the intraclip reload isn't reduced, as far as I'm aware, but I guess we'll find out once we've actually reloaded the magazine. And so, it doesn't really make auto loaders as good as maybe auto reloaders for this event. So maybe this is the kind of game mode where you want to take out your uh, Rinoceronte and just fire 1-1-1 and then dump out the magazine uh, once you've managed to weaken your opponents. Although auto reloaders still with a relatively large intraclip could be a little bit tricky. Man, maybe there are some tier 8 tanks that are really good for this game mode. Maybe a Caliban could be absolutely ridiculous. Ah, oh, and to you. Good luck, have fun. Ah, oh, that's nice. People all in good spirits for their RNG. 
I wonder what the player base is going to think, because obviously RNG has been a very controversial topic in, in World of Tanks for pretty much like its inception, right? Some people absolutely hate RNG to the point where they've probably ended up quitting the game um, since its release. Uh, some people, on the other hand, uh, I guess, probably realize that it's quite nice to not be as arbitrary as, oh, the tank is on 400 hit points and I have 400 alpha damage, so therefore I can always kill him, or he's on 401 hit points, oh well, I guess I need two shots. That's where the, the plus or minus is very important, to make it so that it isn't so, you can't calculate it so much, and so you do have those elements of chance in it as well. I'm not defending RNG entirely, because sometimes it's an absolute uh, kick in the teeth every single time, but mm, I still feel like there needs to be uh, there need to be elements of RNG, otherwise it would just feel like the game would be too predictable. Talk about predictable. Oh, I missed. Luckily, he missed me as well. Hit him for 320. Oh. Come on, bud. 746. Pew, 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 pew. Just rolling dice everywhere. Can you believe? So I wasn't turning my turret rounds because I wanted to look at you, Mr. 60TP, but I appreciate the gesture. Okay, we're reloaded again. VZ-55s could be really good for this game mode. That's actually a very scary tank. He's aiming at someone else. I'm actually going to go after his lower plate here. Of course I miss. Did I just sit in front of a Jaegeru? He only did 405 damage to me! That's practically a mineral, ladies and gentlemen. Are you actually kidding me? Okay, well, I wasn't very lucky in my Yakpanzeri 100, but I wasn't that unlucky if you, if you, uh, if you get what I'm saying. All right, I already feel like I've used up all of my good RNG for this game. Um, very concerned about maybe taking another shot here. I think this Yakpanzer is probably going to be cursing the, cursing the stars in that kind of a situation. Ooh. It's ridiculous. He actually took the damage and I didn't there. Wow, he's only got one left now. Whoa, I'm rolling so good. I'm so lucky in the Kranvang. I rolled for 762 and I rolled for 755. That's absolutely ludicrous how fortunate I was getting with my RNG there. Oh my word. And I haven't even really done that much with it. I mean, the VZ-55, to be fair, rolled for 712 on me. But that's not as good as rolling for 757 when you've only got 440 alpha. That means that a, uh, that means that a VZ-55 could actually be rolling for as close as like 900 or, or high 850s. 440? What is a max roll for 440? So a max roll for 440 will... Oh, here we go. No. Yes. 284, no. 494, that's not bad. So a max roll, uh, so three quarters of 440 will be 330. So I've got to add 440 and 330, which is 770. Holy moly, I near max rolled two shells. I've near max rolled three shells this game. Man, I could have had those big damage shots in my Jagdpanzeri 100, but no. Well, that wasn't a good shell. I think these are going to be my last two shots of the game, ladies and gents. That Yakpans is doing a good job, isn't he? I wonder if this mouse thinks that I'm reloading uh, gold right now. I can't really penetrate him, and if he high rolls on me, he's going to get me in this scenario. I guess I'll try and drop back here. Do I try and keep dropping back? I guess I do. Maybe he won't realize that I keep dropping back. Will he catch me? He actually low rolls there. Am I stuck? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I could have got my extra two shots. Well... This shows you just how extreme the RNG is. I got incredibly lucky this game. Incredibly lucky that the Jagdpanzer min rolled on me and then I max rolled three shells. But even though I max rolled three shells, I only did 3,700 damage this game. All right, so Kranvang, definitely a, a great vehicle for this game mode with the extra engine power and just having that, that decreased reload time. But why don't we try and drop down to tier 8 and try and find some premium tanks that might be good for this game mode. I think that could be quite funky. So let me just have a quick look at the missions that are available. Okay, so missions up for grab. If you play tier 10s, 
You can get 30,000 credits five times if you do 2,000 damage a game. And you can get 50 bonds every day for the next three days. And if you get 10 tokens, you're also going to get 250 bonds. So if you either play, if you get your five games on Friday and your five games on Sunday, or you do three, three, and four on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you can get yourself a tasty amount of bonds for this event. It'll be 350 in total if you want to, if you want to try and get those those top tier rewards so i'm thinking one of the best tanks for this game mode has to be the g saw why because the g saw actually has a really good unload speed but a very long reload speed and when you combine that with the fact that the g saw has very lackluster engine power i think that this thing could be one of if not the most scary tanks that you're ever going to play with or or play against I'm not sure that many people will have thought about the G-Saw. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Wow, my reload is down to 30 seconds from 40. Now, don't get me wrong. 30 is still uh, quite a long reload, but that's way, way, way better. And I think that vehicles that have incredibly long reloads but quite short intraclip reloads are probably going to end up being the best. So apparently there's a Borask on my team who doesn't like other Borasks. Focus that Borask. He rages hard. What? How do we know he rages hard? Is he in your clan or something? I'm so confused. How do you know he rages hard? Uh, what is this? Undercover? Maybe he's got his friend in a Borask on the enemy team? Wow, look at the G-Saw with this engine power. This is going to be crazy. Absolutely crazy. Look at that. Upslope of 52. Beautiful stuff. This is very unusual for the G-Saw. So I'm trying to think about where I want to take this vehicle. The Emil on our team has literally just rushed into the middle of the map. And honestly, this is that's a legitimate tactic. Do you know why it's a legitimate tactic? Because if you play aggressively in this game mode and you just try and make a lot of credits, you can you could do that. You could make a lot of credits. Aggressive play in this game mode during the uh Oh, hold on. I've got to try and actually hit these shells instead of just thinking. Um in the previous game mode, which was called Railgun. Dude, so much to think about when you're playing this. In the previous game mode, which was called Railgun, uh, just being incredibly aggressive in vehicles ended up with you 95 damage. 95 damage for my 30 second reload. Thank you. Thank you, G-Saw. Get it out, Quacky Babs. So playing aggressively in your KV-5 and ramming and just the fact that you could be able to spot everyone, it was it was pretty outrageous to say the least how many credits you could make. The only thing that worries me about this game mode uh, is that now the spotting mechanics are back in play, that there's still going to be a vision fight. But I think that's also good, because I don't know what you felt about the the previous one, the railgun for the last arcade cabinet, but I thought that it got incredibly boring incredibly quickly. 122. Uh, can I roll any lower? Well, I guess I could always just not do any damage. 498 is more my kind of roll. I'm in a lot of trouble here, ladies and gents. I don't think reversing is going to get me out of trouble here. I'm going to have to run like this, try and raise my turret. Hope the Skoda T-56 isn't going to get me. Can I make it all the way? I don't think I can. I have to slinky down here and then just try and hide in this alcove and then try and get one more magazine in. I'm not going to be able to make it. Gosh, I totally made a big mistake there that I didn't think about everybody's engine power. Oh, is that Skoda just going to come after me? He is. I'm not going to reload in time. Oh, hopefully he reloads. Hopefully he reloads. Ah, he bounces! What am I doing to his tank? Well, I just did a 1,400 to him. Maybe I can ram him? Oh, two! Not like this! <laughs> wow, that damage was actually outrageous. We rolled for 362, 503, 295, and then 322, which was nearly enough to be able to take out the entirety of a Skoda T-56. If you have a G-Saw, I think this thing could be a real hot pick for being able to make credits. So I'm kind of happy that the vision-based fight has returned because I really didn't enjoy the lack of vision fighting and it made the previous version really boring. So it could be a good idea to actually play your high DPM light tanks once again as Vision is back in the game. So I actually ended up finishing top on experience and second on damage in the G-Saw. I think that thing's going to be an absolute monster of a vehicle. But let's think what else could be fun inside this game mode. Well, why don't we play the heavy tank with the highest alpha damage at tier 8? Of course, it's the one and only. It's the Caliban. And remember, one of the weaknesses of this vehicle is the, the reload. So 
pumping up the DPM on a vehicle that can save up such an extreme amount of uh, damage in its magazine, its two round magazine, could actually be pretty darn scary. So let's see if we can uh, show the enemy what we've got in the Caliban, which of course I've got my Cobra Commander in this vehicle. So many people have been suggesting to me to uh, have the, the Cobra Commander inside the Cobra. And of course it makes sense. But for me, I've got so used to having him in the Caliban that it just wouldn't really be the same tank without. Okay, so what am I going to do? Am I going to fire high explosive rounds in this game or am I going to fire armor piercing rounds? I should probably go for the AP rounds, I feel, in this matchup. And am I going to use a turbo or am I going to use accuracy device? I'm going to go with the turbo. I think the turbo will help out because it's it's not about increasing my engine power, so to say, but it's about increasing the top speed limit because without the top speed limit, the Caliban can't ever really manage to, uh, to get into position or to be able to make those flanking plays. Alrighty then, so Caliban O'Clock. Ooh, T-77 could actually be really good for this game mode as well, because that's something that has limited engine power, but a great top speed, and um, also has uh, a great unload potential and poor DPM. So maybe a T-77 could be absolutely wild. What's that E-75 TS doing? Is he going to just drive down the alleyway or not? Wow, the engine power on this on this Caliban is absolutely really awesome. I'm going to try and reverse side scrape against this, but remember, reverse side scraping this tank isn't a good idea because you get overmatched constantly. Is there just a defender in the middle of the map? Is there just a Skoda T56 above me? Is there another Carnarvon Action 10 above me? Oh my lord, this game mode is absolutely crazy, boys and girls. Absolutely crazy. Um, I guess i got to get safe. The Shigoda's going to reload. I feel like my whole team has just stopped and now they're all just completely above us. I think I've got to reverse down here as quickly as I can. Shigoda's trying to go after me. I should be okay in this situation. Especially if I can hit this Shigoda. Oh man, that aim time is horrible though. I should have just taken the chance, I think. Oh, come on, Tiger 2. Make a mistake for me. Make a mistake for me, old boy. Just a little bit of a Cobra don donation, you know? A Cobra hit point donation. Maybe I can get this guy. 292. 292. 292. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. This is this is the peak RNG world of tanks. Oh my lord. Armor oh, not penetrated. And he rolls for 347 out of 250. Oh my lord. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I really don't think it is my lucky day, at least to be playing YouTube live. So maybe I'm doing this wrong. Maybe instead of trying to go for the high alpha damage tanks, I should try and go for the high DPM tanks. So why don't we have a go in the TVP-100? This vehicle has a turret, it's got a great top speed, and it's got some of the highest DPM in the game with its standard rounds, let alone if you can penetrate its high explosive rounds. And I think how, many, how loose everyone's playing, there could be a real good opportunity to be able to even penetrate these high explosive rounds. The only problem is... Do I really think that I'm going to get into many situations where I can just freely farm? Because that's really what the goal is with a vehicle like this. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Okay, so with our TVP 100, what am I going to do? Hit the middle of the map, hit the south of the map, hit the north of the map and hope that people play stupid? Hmm. Really what I need to do is try and get into a position where I can actually manage to get a lot of shots off. Otherwise, it's not going to be very favorable for me. I have to admit, the engine power on this thing should really help it to be able to get up to its top speed. I have to admit, this the, the RNG today and the engine power and the way that everyone's playing, I feel like everyone got used to the arcade cabinet game mode and now everyone's just driving around like absolute lunatics, as they probably should do, right? They probably should drive around like absolute lunatics. Okay, spotted the Brigetto um, and a T-77, which I don't pen. I should have aimed a little bit higher there, though. Should have aimed. But everyone's so fast because of the extra engine power. Oh, hello. Okay. Pew, 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 pew. XD says the Borask affirmative presses the quacky babs. All right, looks like my luck has shifted. Maybe this is going to be my game, ladies and gents. 
321 out of 250. Pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. A full health ammo rack live on the YouTubes. Outrageous. Outrageous, boys and girls. This truly is RNG. Extreme. Extreme RNG. To the max. Is this what we would want World of Tanks to be? Have you noticed how all of the games today have actually been incredibly fast? Um, that's... That's what happened in the uh, the previous arcade game mode. I don't want to sit behind this guy, but I just want to play. I want to get forwards. I don't really feel like just sitting back and camping in this scenario, honestly. I think that bull rascal have me in the bush. There he is. Good, he's down. Whoa, I just managed to dodge all of those. 13, but that's an HE shell. 600? He rolled for 600 against me? Well, now it's my turn. Oh, 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 that's your repair kit gone a mill. That's your tank gone a mill. My word, look how quickly this thing fires. No wonder the games are going to be far, uh, faster. If you increase every, if you improve everybody's reload by 25%, but you don't increase their hit points by 25%, then what are you going to do? I really think that Wargaming made a bit of a mistake by not increasing everybody's hit points. I think it could have been really fun. If Wargaming had increased everybody's hit points by 25%, I think that the games wouldn't be just so crazy fast as they are. I think, in my opinion, they're a little bit just too quick at the moment. Um, after playing this game mode uh, just a little bit today. I only played it off stream. Well, off... Oh, my lord, didn't see that. There's so many bizarre situations, man. There's so many bizarre situations. I shouldn't have just driven around that corner. Oh, my lord. It's... This is... This is tough to play. I... It's, you almost have to relearn. Never have I ever, within two minutes of the start of the game, seen eight enemy vehicles driving up in that position. So I guess I've got to just stop going on my instincts and start to actually read the map a little bit more. Anyway, full health ammo rack, extreme DPM there. I tell you what, this game mode is going to be exhausting if you try and think about it too much. I think you just got to go with the flow. Although, as we saw in that last game, when I went with the flow and I didn't think about going around the corner, ugh, yeah, that didn't work out for me. Okay, so we've played some at tier 8. Let's finish this off one more time at tier 10. And I think the best way is to finish as we began playing the FV215B183. Let's go. All right, so let's get, hopefully, smashing some tanks. So do you know what I think I'm going to do this game mode? Instead of going and playing down the heavy flank where I try and just trade, I'm just going to go into the middle of the map, I think, and play against the mediums. And then maybe, just maybe, I can even get a magical shot into an FV4005, which undoubtedly would be the dream, right? To be able to hit the FV4005. Okay, so middle of the map it is. Shall I just go and sit there? I reckon there are going to be two FE405s literally sitting there. Maybe even three of them. So I don't think I want to go up that way. Super Conqueror, I have got a bad feeling about your hit points, man. But maybe I've just got a bad feeling from the way that my RNG has been going today. I think it's going to take me a few rounds to uh, to, to figure it out. Oh, there's the FE405. <gasps> oh, I had a shot, but I didn't manage to take it. I think my Super Conqueror just rolled for 700. Okay, am I just going to get hit by an FE405 by going down here? Possibly. Maybe that is what's going to happen to me. Um, oh well, I feel like I've already committed now. So there's a 268 version 4 above me. Of course, there are going to be real fast vehicles about. I'm actually going to switch to an armor-piercing round here rather than a Hesh round. Because I just don't think I'm going to be able to hit the Hesh round on that vehicle. Um, can I manage to just drive up here without getting caught by the FE405? This is a bit of a weird one. Well... I definitely, uh, I definitely was going to get caught by those two FE4005s, but luckily for me, they actually low rolled. They rolled for 615 out of 1,750, and these games, they're just so fast. It's, it feels like the game is almost already over because one of the flanks has been completely won. Yeah, I don't know, man. This is definitely not my kind of world of tanks. Definitely not my kind of world of tanks, but hopefully against this Progetto. Or shall I shoot the FE? I'll get that FE. Just a casual armor-piercing round. At least that one did low roll, like his did on me. Maybe I should go after this Cranvong? I think I should. I'm going to turn my tank around. A little bit ugly. Progetto's going to hit me for 100. Is that it? Is that all you've got, Progetto? Oh, the Cranvong doesn't even have enough hit points to really be even worth my time right now. Leopard does, then. Leopard does. So this is the 277. I should go after him. Oh, baby, give me a good roll. Give me a good roll. The turret ring is damaged. We can barely turn it. 
<laughs> oh my goodness, that's the second full health ammo rack we've had in a single video. Although, it was 2,200. Oh dear goodness, where's this Granvon going? He is going to be going to the garage, unfortunately for him. Yeah, just going to make sure that one hits. <laughs> I'd just like to clarify, these are armor-piercing shells we're firing right now. These are not your Hesh rounds. Unfortunately, none of the enemy tanks really have enough hit points to really justify those kind of Hesh round juice. Or maybe the Progetto does. Does he? I'd rather just keep rolling AP because they seem to be working out for me, right? They seem to be doing the damage that I need. Get out of my way, Cranvang. Who put you there? Oh, it was me. I forgot. Oh, sorry about that. Do you think I can get this leopard in the side from this angle? Probably not. 268 maybe if he tries to run away. Yeah, definitely. Oh, come on. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mine. <laughs> All right. Well, at least we finally came good. Uh, unfortunately, it was at the end of the video. Uh, 4,000 damage dealt here and four kills. I'm sure that we could uh, manage to get a lot more, but these games are so quick. So enjoy them. If you're going to be playing World of Tanks this weekend, my tips for you are uh, that everything is dangerous with the increased reload. High DPM tanks dangerous, high alpha damage tanks dangerous. I think low damage per minute vehicles, you know, they're the ones that I'm thinking about, like the 705 or the Panzer 7 are probably not going to be so good for this game mode. Tanks that can ram are still going to be very effective because of the engine power increase. So object, uh, object 705A could still be okay from like a ramming perspective. I think your best bet with premium tanks are to play vehicles like the G-Saw that have great top speed limits but have very bad engine power or reasonably bad engine power that can't sustain the top speed. Vehicles that have a long reload but very quick burst damage like the G-Saw could be very good. Um, other vehicles that could be very good are just ones with real high DPM for premium tanks so that you could be able to make yourself a lot of credits. So good luck to all of you out there who are playing the element of surprise for the RK cabinet. And yeah, I'd, I'd like to give uh, props to Wargaming as well for just creating these fun little weekend events. And I think having them once a month could just be a little bit of extra fun inside the game mode. And if it doesn't require them, too much effort and let's be honest all they really have to do is just change a few of the statistics to try and create like a fun game mode then maybe it's something that they continue the only thing that worries me however is can you imagine if wargaming are thinking well this would be so much more fun if world of tanks was like this at least for me <laughs> no no it really isn't and i think it would get boring very quickly Anyway, that's it for today, ladies and gents, boys and girls. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments down below what vehicles you are going to be playing for the element of surprise inside the arcade cabinet. And also, if you're watching this video as it goes live on Friday, I'm going to be streaming all day long on Twitch. And I'm also going to be giving away three Type 59s to celebrate reaching 500,000 followers on Twitch. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.